You know, you've got to look at the halfbacks as well. They, they've got so much experience in there. But Garcia at 13, their captain, he'll, he'll just bring it as well. And he knows how to lead the team. And it'll be exciting to see that. Uh, certainly will be. Their coach is Laurent Fressino. And I caught up with him a little bit earlier. Laurent, welcome to Halifax. How was the camp in France? camp was very good. Uh, we spent four days in Bordeaux uh, and we settled uh, everything before we, we arrived in England. So we had a long meeting, but a few good uh, training sessions over there. So, so yeah. Big match today against Tonga. What are your expectations? What do you want to see out of your squad today? Been in charge for the last uh, 15 months. Uh, you know, we already played England in last October play Wales in June so we want to keep on building and keep on improving uh, so no matter uh, the opposition we know like Tonga will be very very good and uh, the you know uh, superstars and and great players uh, but we want to focus on ourselves and uh, and we want to keep on building until until the end of the uh, the last game of the of the pool against Samoa. So uh, there's a few objectives we, we, we share with the players and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll see that today. What are your expectations out of this World Cup? It's a very strong squad for France, probably the strongest in, in many, many years. Yeah, um, if we look at ourselves, I think that's the first time we've got 100% professional full-time players, uh, which means obviously we... we be the strongest for a long time but if you look at the, the opposition as well if you look at England like they, they, they are great squad great players some more could be could be uh, you know like a lot of players choose to play for someone instead of Australia which you know speak to to itself so uh, and we talk about Greece as well with you know players like Lachlan Elias who, who's a, who will be a superstar in, a, in the next few months so uh, the, the pool and the group will be very very hard but um, what, we, what we want to do is just focus on ourselves and, and play one game at, at a time. Laurent, great to have you at Chase Stadium, all the very best for today Thank you very much, thank you so these are the live pitches coming out of the Chase Stadium here, famous Halifax Panthers home ground. And as we say, joining us in commentary, Will Hopawate, the Tongan star, also St. Helens star and the star of England Rugby League, Women's Rugby League, Amy Hardcastle. Will, it's a spectacular day here at Halifax and it looks like there's a really strong Tongan element in the crowd. There is, mate. They've just started to, to flock it in a bit of numbers here. And so... Uh, it's good to see their support. Great weather for rugby league and the pitch is good as well. And who better to go to than you, Amy, on the back of you being a local here and you can tell us all about it. Now, I, I believe I'm right in saying one of the junior clubs that are going out with the players is your home club, Siddle. Is that right? It is and it's great to see them here today. And it, to be honest, Halifax is a, a great town and all the, all the fans have come out from Halifax today to support a great game. It, it's great to see. Of course, this has been the home ground of Halifax since 1998. Thrum Hall was the previous home ground, and the Shea underwent a renovation in 2002, and is now the home ground of the Halifax Panthers. Just about ready for teams to come out. Just a note, too, that there'll be no Sippy Tau performed today. Was there any particular reason around that, Will? It, it's such uh, an important part of what Tongan Rugby League represents. Uh, yeah, I think we just you know, really want to focus on our performance today. Uh, there's a few other players that haven't played in a few weeks, and so uh, just a matter of blowing out the cobwebs, getting combinations uh, get back together again and uh, trying to get a good performance in, getting ready for the World Cup. A couple of weeks since you played in the Super League Grand Final. Was there any thought of you playing in this game? Uh, no, I wasn't a chance today. I, I, uh, I took my hammy in the, in the final there, so I'm hoping to be back for the first ball game. OK, that first game for Mate Ma'a Tonga up against Papua New Guinea. That'll be handy for you. A couple of games at St. Helens. That must be of benefit to you, of, to Conrad, and of also uh, Christian Wolf. Yeah, it is, mate. Uh, the club was really supportive with the um, Supporting Tonga initiative when uh, the tsunami happened earlier this year, and uh, the club got right behind it. There was a, a round game earlier in the year where uh, all funds that were raised at the game went to... Uh, the Tongan Relief, and so there's a bit of a connection there with the club, and obviously, as you said, with myself, Connie, uh, Ignatius Parsi, and Coach Christian Wolf, um, it's good to play a few games there. 
Yeah, it certainly is. After what's been a very tough week weather-wise, it's great that the gods have smiled on us here. Beautiful sunny day in Halifax in the west of Yorkshire. Lovely crowd building as well. But what is a real rugby league town, isn't it, Amy? A lot of people uh, talk about the, the rugby league towns in Lancashire and the rugby league towns in Yorkshire, but Halifax is, a, I think, celebrating 150 years next year. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's a lot of special people that have come out of Halifax for rugby league and, you know, what a great day for it. The sun is shining. Let's hope it stays like this and just let's enjoy a really good day of rugby league. I think it's interesting, too, around this French side and just speaking with Laurent Fressinou, the coach beforehand, so many players are now full-time professionals, which makes such a difference when you're up against sides like Tonga, for example, Samoa, that are stacked full of not just professionals, but NRL stars as well. Yeah, of course. And, you, you know, full-time, it just enables you to have that rest and be able to get your training in or, around around the day and you, you've got your evenings off and it will it'll influence massively today in this game and like I spoke before it's there's a lot of Catalans in there and, and it's going to be good to see um, what they bring today really in a French team and I think they'll give them a good game um, but it, it'll be good to see some of the uh, younger ones as well coming through and, and, and to be honest it's good to see Louis Jalfrey from Halifax coming and playing and, and being at his hometown at the moment, you know, playing at Halifax, and I'm sure he'll have a lot of his supporters behind him today. No doubt a big cheer when Lewis runs out for France today at some stage, named on an extended bench. And of course, we presume he will get some game time as well. Just looking at that spine of France, as we call it, Morgan Escade at Salford, Tony Guijo and Atta Morg. And then Ulrich the Costa, such a very strong spine, made mention of it to Christian Wolf in the pre-game lead-up. You better tell us about time in camp, Will. How's it been? Who's who's the the life of the party, and why is it Conrad Harrell? <laughs> yeah, Connie's definitely uh, you know the the class clown, and uh, look, it's been great. Uh, camp's been good. The boys have got the right mix of uh, knowing when to switch on and be serious for training, and. Um, you know, muck around a bit off the off the training paddock, and so yeah, part of our, our culture and our people is to uh, take things lightly, and we like to muck around. And there's there's definitely plenty of laughs in camp, and uh, it's just great to be a part of. So there are the two teams led out by their respective skippers, Benjamin Garcia for France, and Siasiwa Tokiaho, the former rooster, who will be joining Catalan. So he'll be playing today against. 13 of his teammates for next year. 13 Catalan players, eight from Toulouse. And here are the mascots with each of the sides. King Cross Park, are they feared rivals or just rivals uh, <laughs> that you used to play against, Amy? They, they are rivals. Uh, you know what it's like in a town. There's always rivals within it. But if you look at them, they're dead young. So, you know, <laughs> we can't um, be saying they'll be rivals at that age. But, you know, it's great to see the, the younger generation getting out there today. All right, you better inform me. Which are the Siddle jerseys, Amy? Oh, it's uh, blue and white to your right. Ah, uh, yes. The colours of Halifax. National anthems right now, first up. The national anthem of Tonga.
So anthems are completed. As mentioned a little bit earlier, the Sippy Tower will not be performed today. Concentration on Rugby League for Tonga. And we are just about underway. I'm going to put you on the spot, guys. Will, you're going to have to give me a scoreline prediction for this game today. Scoreline prediction. Uh, look, I think it'll be a, a close game. I think, as, as you said earlier, a uh, number of the, the French team playing for Catalans and uh, just having that full-time experience, you know, obviously gives you a bit of an edge when you play. And so, uh, obviously, I'm going to, you know, back the boys and back the country of Tonga uh, being here. So, uh, I'll go 20 to 4. 20 to 4. Okay, there we go. Uh, tight defensive game. What about you, Amy? What do you give me a scoreline prediction today? I'm feeling 32 12 to 30. Tonga. 32 12 to Tonga. All right. Our referee today is Mr. Griffiths. Just about underway. Tui Lolo here gets us started. And it is France at the northern end of the ground. And that's a very strong defensive start here from Tonga. And we anticipate that. This Rugby League International, the Taz Batiri Cup, coming to you live from Shea Stadium at Halifax. So France just struggling a little to get out of their own end. Making their way out to an edge, and it's good, strong defence there. That was Kalal Matangi, who's going to be a key for Tonga in this World Cup. Such a great season with the South Sydney Rabbitohs. Conrad Hurrell getting involved in that defence. Now French with a little bit of a spread of the ball, and there's some good defensive work from Junior Amon. So... They are struggling. Oh, we've seen an error. This is turnover of possession. And now we've got Tonga on the attack. That was a great defensive set, Will. It was, mate. You always want to start the game off with, uh, you know, putting a, a good defensive foot forward. And uh, I thought the Tonga team really did that. So, had a dummy half. They go now to Amon. And here's Adam Fanua Blake, who's charging forward. And he's going to be stopped. In the shadows of the posts, Tonga, first opportunity with the football. Here's Kalama Tangi. Lolohia went to Fafida. Big spin and turn. Oh, we've seen a little knock on there. That was great bit of defensive work there from Morgan Escarte. And so, Amy, that was a great opportunity for Tonga that they've just let go begging. Yeah, like I said, Morgan at fullback is class, and, and that came a lot from him there. He got got onto him, didn't matter how big he was, and he rolled him over and he, and he stopped that try. So that was Tessie New in jersey number 22, playing fullback today for Tonga. You mentioned Pescade, Salford City Reds, 159 Super League games. And 89 tries over what's been a very celebrated career for over a decade. Here's France. Their opportunity to come out of their own end. De Costa to dummy half. And I'll come the same way. And nice little offload. A little bit of an indecision there. Gives your and so it's walk, picks it up. And now he's swamped in strong defence. So France will go the same way. Finally, they get to their kick and get some out of trouble a little. Bounces now for New. And he comes, and that's a really good defensive chase from the French side. And they come up with a, a good finish, a good chase on what was an otherwise very tough set again, Will. It was, mate. Uh, but, you know, they put a good kick in, and the kick chase I thought was outstanding. And so, you know, they're putting their defensive effort in now. I wish to see Conrad Hurrell with a big run. Oh, De Costa might have come off worse for wear <laughs> going head to head with Move Big Conny. It was the second phase play. Now out of dummy half. That's really nice work. Tua Peloto was shut down there. In fact, the referee's going to say knock on. And this will be loose head and feed for France. This is exactly what they were looking for, Amy. It was, yeah. And like you say, error made there. But France have got it now and they're in some good ball. So let's see what they can produce. So bathed in glorious sunshine here at the Shea. Amy Hardcastle turning out for England in her third Rugby League World Cup. In a few weeks' time, Will Hopawade 
part of our commentary team. Here's France now, a little opportunity with the football and an old teammate of yours, Samasoni Lange. Yeah. Does he have a bit of a chat to him before the game, Will? Yeah, the boys will give him a bit of stick, uh, a bit of friendly banter before the game. Um, he's a great player, Sonny. Uh, we've been lucky enough to play with him before, but, you know, he's uh, playing for France now, so it's good to see him out there playing. There's the skipper, Garcia, bumped away from a couple. De Costa throws long now. Oh, that's a player under pressure. That was Gizio. Nice work there from Mamone getting up and shutting it down, but they've found something the same way. Here's some nice work coming in from the back rower, Segua. 20 metres out, France. Come back to centre field. Out the back now is Morg. He went short. That was a lovely pass. Picked up now by Julien. And the referee's going to say that is last tackle. This will be a handover. And they've defended very nicely there, Tonga. Gives a little insight into David Fafita, first opportunity to play with Tonga. How's he been within the camp, Will? He's been good, mate. Uh, he's really bought into the culture, into the team. Uh, you know, he's going to be a handful. Um, you know, when he plays, you, I think you'll see today. His ability, everyone's seen his potential and the way that he plays. Uh, it's just a matter of giving some early ball. Here's Amoli Olakawatu. And he's going to draw a penalty here. High tackle. So we might have to have a look at that one again. Just see who the perpetrator was. Normally playing on the right side for the Manly Seagulls in the National Rugby League. Amoli out on the left today for Tonga. Uh, a little bit too much in the tackle there from Gijo. So great opportunity for Tonga to go on the attack. Tap and go, Suli. And Suli is beating tackles and almost goes all the way to the try line. He's only six metres out now for Newell Blake. Footwork always standing in the tackle. Eventually he's dragged to ground. That was Desiree in defence. They'll come right side. Lots of players. Kalama Tangi. Lovely ball to Fafida. Gets over the line. Well, Will Hopawati talked about it just a little bit earlier. And now we see the impact of this power runner, Dave Fafida, on the right hand side. First try to Tonga. 4 0 the scoreline. Uh, yeah, great try there from David Fit. I think, you know, a lot of players can't do the things that he does. That was uh, really a nothing play, just power, speed, and uh, just a natural footballer. David, it's a great try. It's uncanny, isn't it? The number of players that David can make miss. Bit of a mismatch there with Artur Morg. Spun out of the tackle. And that's what it's like, isn't it, Amy? Just finding that. Not necessarily a weak chink, but they're, they're shorter number. There's a they haven't got their spacings quite right, and David took advantage of that. Yeah, and he's seen that, and it, what great vision for that as well. And and for me, there it's going to be hard trying to stop such a big body coming fa from five meters in the line there, and, and he did well to get over the line. Just unlucky for France, the, a little bit of a scramble in defence there, but you know they, they were tried wrapping up for here, for, and um, yeah, unlucky there for France. So here we go, first choice goal kicker, see you see why Tokiaho. He is, mate. Uh, he's actually done a, a good job for us in the past. He's, he's kicked a little bit for the Roosters as well. And yeah. so uh, probably our, our most experienced goal kicker. Um, hopefully I haven't jinxed him and this one goes over, but um, <laughs> see how he goes. What an incredible player he has been for the Sydney Roosters. One game at the Warriors and then the rest of his career has been spent in the red, white and blue. I saw him catching up with Director of Rugby at France, Trent Robinson. Here's Tokiaho. No, you haven't jinxed him. He just sneaks it in. So the scoreline, 6-0. Tonga over France. Have a look at France. Opportunity for them to just compete a little bit. They've shown the opportunity when they've had the footy and able to hang on to it, get to their kick. They can be competitive. For Newell Blake. 
It's amazing to think, Will. He's only 26 years of age, Adam, and he's got so much good footy in front of him. Absolutely, mate. I think he's uh, such a handful to, to handle. Big body, footwork right at the line, uh, you know, always finding his front. Down a short side. Oh, ball came loose, and that will be six more. So this is the pass over the top to Fafida. So Prodato Morg has to go one-on-one -on -one again with him, get some help from teammates, and they bring him to ground. He's just short of the halfway line. Tonga, Kalau Matangi, such a developing player for the uh, Rabbitohs. Part of Brad Fittler's extended squad for the New South Wales Blues over the last couple of seasons. Here's Amon, and ball was out in front of Tessie New, and they've just shown a little more hunger there, France, and they've come up with the footy. That was a nice bit of work from Paul Marcon out there on the wing, Amy. Yeah, that was great defence there. You could see his desire to get to the ball as well, and they kind of read that play from Tonga. So that won't please Christian Wolf. Ball on the ground and the mistake made. So now it's France's opportunity. Such a size differential between these two sides, very noticeable. And Will spoke earlier about the forward pack, and that's that's a real strength. Here's Julian, one of those edge back rowers, and he's brought to ground. That's last tackle. So De Costa, our kick option goes from Garcia. Now Gijo, some space into a corner and taken very nicely out there for Tonga. Some great kick chase there from France. Who's fastest, Will, in the squad? Have we, uh, uh, one of the things that we do want to see during the course of this World Cup, maybe even today, is Tolotau Kola in open space. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a sight to see, isn't it, when he's uh, in open space. I'd, I uh, would say he would be the fastest in the squad, mate. Um, you can just tell the way that he moves at training. He, it looks like he's gliding, so we could see him in some open space today. So this is a slowish play the ball from Fanua Blake. Now it comes to Torki Aho and he goes straight at Julian and pushes him off and it's going to be a quick play of the ball and he bounces up and now goes Lolo here and the Huddersfield Giant found his runner. Fanua Blake again it was with another carry. Now Lolo here down a short side looking for a runner. Throws long out in front of Conrad Hurrell and that'll be a knock on. Again, it was just a little bit of loose play at the back end of that set, and that's once again going to upset Coach Christian Wolf. Yeah, he probably won't be too happy with that. Um, obviously, it's good to play a bit of ad-lib footy, uh, but you've got to make sure you complete. And so, um, look, unfortunate mistake there, but hopefully the boys can turn around and put in a, a good defensive display here. So scrum feed for France. Out to Morg. Two what? tests Move. for oh. France. Just 23 years of age. Another one of these players from the Catalan club. It's so interesting that Laurent Fresinot will be with St. Helens Whoa. next year, Will. That's uh, great to catch up with your future club coach or assistant coach yeah so I, I caught up with him just before the game just to introduce myself say hello and get to know him seems like a, a great man and uh, you know well I obviously thinks and speaks highly of him and so it'd be good to be uh, working with him uh, come preseason oh he won't be happy with that there was just a bit of indecision question marks around who it was that was going to get the footy I guess when Dave Fafita is coming at you defensively that's a, <laughs> always the opportunity to take a bit of a second look So it's interesting how long these players, a lot of them haven't played for extended periods. And I think that's why this warm-up game's been so important, Will, just to blow the cobwebs out, just to make sure that the, when that first game does come around in eight days' time, that you're ready to go. Uh, absolutely, mate. We, we've done this last World Cup and uh, it really worked for us heading into our World Cup campaign. And no doubt uh, today's trial match will do the same. Here's Olakawatu. Speak about another player with great footwork at the line, very late as well. Now Lolo here. Oh, intercept. No, that'll be six again, says the referee. Back to Lolo here. So, third player in there. There's a right. 
And France defending grimly. Now they come to Fanua Blake, who's hit strongly over the top. That was a great bit of defensive work. I think it was the skipper Garcia. Now they go back. And Tokiaho is just getting in front of a player. Kaloa Matangi was the man going through. And now that's play on. Late offload. He's the dummy on the inside. Now it goes to the outside. So all the dazzling footwork there from Talatau Amone. Here's a dummy and go out of dummy half. And that was Otokolo. He was looking to pick up a try. Now they go left hand side. Lola here goes out. And this will be a try. Second of the afternoon for Tonga and Christian Tuipolotu gets across and puts it down. Lovely bit of work there from the halfback Tui Lolo here. It was mate, great, but great uh, piece of skill there from Tui. Um, you know, had to throw quick hands and uh, a ball out to the winger, uh, which isn't easy to do. And so, great bit of skill, great lead from the lead runner there to join some defenders. Uh, and lucky enough, it came out for uh, Christian Tuipolotu who scored the try. Amy, that's. Just a, a case of a half identifying an extra number down the short side, and that's exactly what Lolo here did there. Yeah, the winger was in space there, and he recognised that really well, and it was a class pass straight to the winger, and he made the winger's job pretty easy, if you're asking me. For those who might be joining us anywhere around the globe, this is Novo Sports broadcast of the International Rugby League match coming to you live from Shea Stadium at Halifax. I know that there's rugby league fans who are tuning into this either very early in the morning over in Tonga, New Zealand, Australia, the United States. Such a passionate rugby league nation. And, of course, based on that huge success that you had in 2017, I mean, it was so close to getting to a final, a magical semi-final, or you might see it differently, Will. <laughs> 20 points to 18 against against England. And I think from that point, uh, the interest in this Tongan international side has grown and grown. Uh, yeah, it was uh, you know, definitely a memorable campaign, that 2017 World Cup. Um, a lot of memories created there, and you know, we're just shy of a final. So hopefully we can do one better uh, this World Cup with... We put that behind us now, and all our focus and attention is on um, uh, the World Cup here in England. Here's Torquiaho. He's about 10 metres in from the Western touchline, swings through, and that is waved away. So the scoreline remains. Tonga 10, France nil. Here we are again, having a look at the reverse angle. Lola here just identifies that they're, they're a little short on the blind side. Creates the extra number. Lovely pass out. And Christian Tuipolotu gets across and scores second try for Tonga. Much to the delight of the Tongan fans here in the crowd. So here is Gijo with the restart. Picked it straight to Dave Fafita, which no one was happy about in the French team. Hurrell goes hard at Costa. Makes a good tackle too. A little number nine. Got some help from Sigua. Otokolo finds out. This is for Noah Blake. And that's good, strong defence up front from Belmas. And it's Tonga. Working their way out of their own end. Another strong run from Kalawa Matangi. Not happy with the slow play of the ball. Here's Torquiaho. No second phase from Siasiwa just yet this afternoon. Expect that to come. So they go to Lola here. Oh, now that's come into the hands of Fafita. That's going to be play on, says the referee. So here he goes. Oh, he's pulled it up. Much to the delight of Morgan Escarte, <laughs> who was going one on one with David Fafita. A runaway. David Fafita. We'll have to have a look at the replay of that. It seemed, you could see Conrad Hurrell there saying, well, why not? What are you seeing here, Will? Uh, look, I thought, to be honest, it was play on. Um, the ref must have thought it went forward from, from Gonny's hands. Charged down, landed in his hands, went backwards to, to David Peter, but um, wasn't to be. It was a knock-on from, uh, from Gonny. So that will be a penalty to France. Here they go, two balls on the field. So we'll go back 
Samasoni Langi, who is, of course, a Catalan, one of the older players in this squad. Seven tests for Tonga, including appearing in that 2013 Rugby League World Cup. They did play a game here at Shea Stadium against Italy during that campaign. That was one. 16-0 Tonga over Italy with a young James Tedesco in the centres for the Italian side. Here's the ball over the top. It's a lovely pass. And now there's an opportunity as he's taken over the sideline. Too strong. That was forward Yaya. And whilst it looked like there might have been an opportunity there, Amy, that was shut down very quickly. Yeah, maybe the option probably wasn't that player then. Maybe he could have come out the back or maybe done an inside, but it, they're too strong on that edge. Comrade loves the physicality on, on an edge and um, there's no way he's going to let anyone past him. So Tonga have opted for a midfield scrum. As we see this extended Tongan bench a bit of a warm-up here on the sideline just to let you know not full international rules today it's not a senior international match it is an international match and as a result of that Christian Wolf and Laurent Fresino will be an experiment with some combinations some lineups leading into this rugby league world cup both teams have seven reserves listed we expect game time from all of them So here's Tonga with the football again. There's the second phase play. Now into space. Here's the one-on-one. -on -one. Escarte has got to make the tackle. He does. It's good work. The French fullback stands up. That was nice work from Tessie New. Now the kick from Lola here doesn't get it through the line. He dummies. He's back the other way. And there's the footwork. Right foot. Can't get away. Last tackle. Where's their kick option now? We see Tessie New get to first receiver. Kick across field. That's Tui Peloto, the target, bangs it out the back, and they're going to say knock on, because otherwise I think that was France up the field. Tony Gijo wanted to call play on. Why don't we have a look at this replay, Amy? This was the, the interchange of passing. It was to Toki Aho down for Nua Blake, and then Tessie New. It's a, he's an exciting young fullback. Great defence from him there. He, he didn't care how big he was, he just wrapped him up and he, he did great. It's crucial that France look after the ball now. I think they've been a little bit scrappy coming out, maybe throwing some, some balls that aren't necessary. I think if they just kind of focus on just hitting up down the middle and then get some shape on an edge and see what they can deliver. De Costa scheming out of dummy half and he dummied one way and he can't get away from the defence there. That was for feeder. Got some help from Kalal Matangi. Now down a short side, here's Escarde. Well, it's a lovely pass straight into the hands of the ball boy on the sideline. Again, back to what you were saying, Amy. Yeah, and, and look at there. He, I thought they, um, they had numbers. Um, you know, may, maybe the pass wasn't great. It was going behind, not to the hand, hands. And, and for me, it's it's kind of getting that position on the field and then and then playing on an edge. Because for me, Tonga, they're stacking up on that right side and it's going to be hard for the French to break that line. Just having a look at that replay, Will, it looked like there was the opportunity. Winger her Cola had come in on Samasoni Lungi, who's just been receiving some treatment. But if pass was directed correctly, that was danger signs. It was, mate. There was an overlap created there on the short side. It was a four and three. And you know, as, as you said, if it hit the winger, uh, he would have been into some space. But France got the penalty. I think it was a, a late push in the back of the halfback. And here they are taking the tongue and line. So France will go again. Garcia it is that's making a charge and he's going to be stopped and eventually no there's a bit of second phase play lovely work to costa ball went behind morgue i thought so that is play on so here's julian using a bit of footwork to get to lolo here and he pushes away from him for feeder it is that made the tackle now lungy goes down a short side to harrell spinning over the try line can't get it down nice defensive work there so he'll go back into the field of play and Play at 10 metres out. So, best bit of attack that we've seen from France all afternoon. Moore finds Gijo, goes out the back. He's Escarde trying to get away from Amon. Did it to a degree. Not up and went again, but now they make the tackle. Quick play of the ball. Oh, in fact, the referee...
Mr Griffiths saying didn't rise fully to his feet. You might have got away with that in the National Rugby League, Will, but looks like the Rugby League World Cup. Referees are policing it pretty closely. Yeah, a bit unlucky there. I thought he was uh, trying to get up for a quick play of the ball and uh, look, it wasn't meant to be. And Luckily enough, the Tongans have the ball with Christian Dubalo to take on the yardage carry. Move now! Hold! Any set plan that... And I suppose you've got to be careful about how much you say, but who Christian looks to as we see Adam for Noah Blake, great meter eater. There's some more meters. When it looks like you're coming out of trouble, the players you look to. Uh, look, most times in, in yardage, and it's pretty a, you know, a general rule, as David, he makes a break. He goes for Peter. He'll be hard to stop. In fact, I don't think they will. Yaha gets pushed away. And David Fafita gets across for his second try of the afternoon. Just a little glimpse that Will Hopawati has told us about. The power runner. His best is very, very good. And we saw a little sample of it right there. Yeah, as I said earlier, Jimmy, I think uh, you know not many players can do what he does. And um, what was that? A 60-meter try from a back rower. You know, outrunning the fullback and other backs. Uh, he's a... Uh, He's a freak of a player, mate. He's um, obviously shown his potential and his ability in that in that play. And Amy, being a centre yourself and that that power runner, I mean, he's an edge back rower, David, but could quite easily play in the centres based on the way rugby league is these days. Yeah, it's, it's everyone's dream to have all that space in front of you, and especially if you've got that power as well. You can you can kind of go where you want to go on the field. Just to let you know, Amy Hardcastle. Very modest. Just the 18 tries in the 19 test matches that she's played. Um, I might have to stop you there. It's, I've got a new statistic for you. Oh, here we go. 21 tries in 21 games for England. Well, OK, I need to do better research than that, don't I? <laughs> Thank you, Amy. How many tries did you score? have you scored for St Helens? I think I'm about 50, 52 in two, in two seasons. 52 in how many games? Oh, I'm not 100% sure on that one. You put me on spot there. All right. <laughs> As we mentioned earlier, Amy turning out for her third Rugby League World Cup. And the only player who was named in the NRL, a Northern Hemisphere player, who was named in the NRL Women's Team of the Decade. So we're joined by Rugby League royalty here today, Will. Here's Siasiwa Torquiaho from out on the Eastern Touchline. One metre in. And he has struck it absolutely superbly. And no wonder he is the number one choice for goal kicker. Ah, uh, yeah. Great kicker, mate. Great kick, that one, from the sideline. Two are putting it over there. And uh, it was actually his lead-up work to, that led to Davies' try. Uh, I think it was his, his flip pass offload that ended up in the hands of Fifita, who scored the try. So great kick and great uh, try assist from Siwa. I think David, just looking at that replay there, slowed down so he could put a fend on forward Yaha out here on the wing here is high kick off and taken by Lolo here and Fanua Blake it is that's going forward who's been your best for Tonga thus far Will who's impressed you the most uh, well I think the try scorer mate is um, you know, obviously scored two tries uh, one of them a long range one and one with uh, the brute strength uh, so at the moment he's, he's, uh, he's playing well oh, first mistake here coming onto the field and that's going to be a turnover that was Kola that unfortunately came up with the error I'll ask you the same question as we see France about to go on the attack Amy who's impressed you from Le Bleu Escarate fullback's definitely been one of the best players at the moment and in his defence has been outstanding but also in his attack he's so elusive and he's so fast in it and he can come up with quite good players outside the back as long as he's getting that ball but I would say he's standing out massively in this game so far Ball, trap. Oh. So here goes France. And they're attacking. Morg is Escade. Oh, man handled by Conrad Harrell. The weight differential there, quite significant. Got a little pat on the back too, did Escade from Conrad. As we see strong defence coming in there from David Fafita. That was on the replacement player there for France. Uh, Corentin Lacan. So France attacking from the middle of the field. They go right side. Here's a charge and a stretch. What a try. Justin Sengade, just too powerful going through the middle of that defence. And this is exciting for France. They haven't played their best football yet, 
but they've come up with a try, Amy. No, that's it, and what they've done as well is they've controlled that ball a lot more and kept it kept it simple, and it just shows, you know, look at the physique of him. He's, right. he's at the line, and he's about five metres away, and he's, he's just touched it over by reaching out, and, and that's great play, and this is what France will need now to kind of get back into this game. We don't see that a whole heap, Will, do we? Powerful ball running, but that's a little bit of defence that's going to be a concern for Christian Wolf. Oh, yeah, mate. Obviously, you know, the, the good teams uh, win games in the back of their defence, and uh, that's been a focus for us, you know, being in camp the past couple of weeks. And so, uh, look, I'm sure Christian won't be too happy with that, but you know, th these are what these games are for, and uh, I'm sure we'll review that and, and fix that up um, for next time. So just on, Justin Sengade. Played this year with Toulouse. Next year will turn out for the Leeds Rhinos. Big move for him. After just 23 Super League games. So you can understand on the power and the evasion that he showed in that try. Exactly why the Leeds Rhinos are interested. Here's Morg. Kicks it almost adjacent. So right now we've got ourselves a ball game. 16 points to 6. And France have struck back and now starting to play some good footy, Will. Yeah, just on Justin Sangari, I, um, I, I rate him highly, mate, as a player. I think he's just a, such a, a strong ball carrier. I came to know him when we played Toulouse uh, earlier in the year and I uh, thought to myself, you know, this guy's uh, got a, a bright future ahead of him. Just 23 years of age as well. So here is France. They'll be buoyed by that. They'll be excited by what they've been able to do. Two, move again. Oh. Here they go, move down the short again. side. France attacking oh. again. They'll continue that way. Just a little bit of a mix up there. Move together. And that was Le Camp. Now dummy on the inside. They're going to go to the outside. And that was crowd favourite here, Louis Joffre. Plays for the Halifax Panthers. Bit of a cheer as he came on. Now Escada puts a lovely little kick. In fact, it's just going to be a little bit too heavy. Nice bit of work there from Tolotau Kola. Just showed patience letting the ball go. Over the dead ball line, seven tackle set. Comes the way of Tonga. And a shine there, uh, a sign there of how keen he is too, getting that, that first hit up and obviously making up for that mistake a little bit earlier, Will. Yeah, Dole is a great player, mate. Uh, obviously, we spoke about it earlier with the speed that he's got, but uh, if you notice early in the game, he's taken a lot of yardage carries, which you know is a big job for wingers as we see the oh. shot right there from oh. Suli. Moses Suli charged over the top. Now there's opportunity. Joffrey, ball on the inside. Be interesting to see what the referee does here. He might rule first knock on, advantage not taken. So, yes, he's going to rule that this will be a loose head and feed. Go the way of France. So might have got a little bit lucky on that one, Amy, as played a little bit of footy. Didn't come up with the the right outcome, but that was powerful ball running from Moses Suli. It was, and he did well to get back up off that. You know, they had they had the numbers on the edge there, just un unfortunate on the core skill, and maybe just not push that pass and taking taking the tackle, and then they can get some structure and maybe work in middle, and then they've got some options either side. So here they go. Samasoni Langi, oh, good work from Tolotau Kola who gets an appreciative pat on the back from Conrad Hull, so animated, Conrad. I'd imagine he's that teammate that everyone just loves playing with, Will. He sure is, mate. He's uh, had such an impact on how we played this year at St. Helens and, uh, you know, that form's carrying into this game. Joffrey misses his mark with the pass, but that's picked up and that's going to be on here for France. Maxim Stefani it was that had ball in hand. Now they go back on the inside. He's getting heavily involved, isn't he, Joffre? And this is Maxim Push. So out of dummy half. This is Eloa Palissier. So that is last tackle. France, Escada goes to Joffre. High one to Ipoloto. That'll come off. That'll be six again, I would think. Just waiting for the referee to make his decision. First knock, on. First knock on Tonga. And again, this is going to be French ball. Great opportunity, Amy. And I know that they've had a couple of days in Bordeaux as Laurent Frasson yep. 
made mention of, but here's an opportunity to put on those plays that you've been working off over the course of the last week or so. Yeah, they're in some great great field possession now and they're, they're working to, from a 50, so it'll be interesting to see what they do from here. I think they just need to look after this ball now because they're in some good ball and, you know, we can see how they can finish it, so let's uh, wait and see. They've had a tendency to come to this left-hand side with Samasone and Lange. I think they... Might try to get him to the outside of Conrad Hurrell. Let's see what they do on this occasion. Well, Lolo here was offside and will get the penalty. So you would think in this international match that it will be tap and go. Just five and a half minutes remaining until half time. So here's Piush, uh, Pelissier. I think they're working more of a left because your centre and your winger play quite well together at, at Catalans and they've had a great season together, so they're probably feeling more connected to the left-hand side when you were saying about them, they've come to the left a lot. Great point that you make, Amy. Here's Stefani with a carry. So they're just five metres short of the line. France on the attack again. They throw long and it's out the back. Joffre, they've got the extra man. Escarde, can he release? He can't. Conrad Harrell does it. He's fighting in the tackle. And eventually the Salford City Red is dragged to ground. They did create the extra number there. Here they go again. Cesar Rouge is on the field. So centre of the field they'll go. They'll this time work the right-hand side. Here's some nice footwork at the line. Got away from the tackle of Ben Murdoch Masilla. So so play the ball. Oh, look, Oatu. Getting in the way here now, out of dummy half. This is Felicier again, and he's come on and made a real difference, hasn't he? Massive Back difference, yeah, and it's great that he didn't throw that pass out there and just took the tackle. Joffre, it was an arcing run that was coming in from Maxim Piusch, and he's brought down in the shadows of the posts. Felicier goes now. Here's Joffre. It's a lovely kick into the end goal area. I think I'm right. Is that Hamali Olakawatu getting back there, Will? And just covering up. Uh, I think it is, mate. Great scramble there from from Muller to, to get back there and dive on the kick. Um, you know that shows his uh, mindset and attitude coming into into this game. Of the big men in the squad, you know, we look at we talk about David Fafita and we talk about Adam Fanua Blake. Is there is there a standout athlete in your mind? Is there the one that physically is just so challenging? Uh, well, he'd, he'd definitely be one of them. Uh, Hamole, just a, a big, long, powerful yeah. uh, human he is. And uh, it would be nice to see you get him some early ball to uh, show that off. Just to let you know, too, Christian Wolf not yet finalising his squad. He'll do that tonight for the Rugby League World Cup. No Sonny Luke today, no Will Penasini. Daniel Tupo, no Will Hopawade, obviously. And, of course, no Jason Taumalolo. Here they go again, France. We'll get back to that very shortly. Trying to get to the outside. They can't quite do it as Romano is taken down. He's only 18 metres out. Marcon throws long. And here's another opportunity for France. There's a bit of footwork at the line. He can't get away from Murdoch Masilla. And they lost a bit of ground on that one, France. They come left side. Here's a lovely kick into space again. But Cola is able to get there and... And he's able to defuse the situation. That was Cesar Rouge coming up with a kick. And this is now great defence from France getting strongly off their line. Just a couple of minutes before half time, and we see a Tonga side that's under a bit of pressure. Here's Harrell tries to lift the team, and he, he does that with a strong 10 metre carry. 16 6 the score line, and it's been a tight contest. I think. Both coaches will will be pretty happy with what they've seen thus far. Oh, they will, mate. I think um, obviously there's room for improvement for, for both sides and a lot of positives for, for both sides as well as we see uh, Tonga come up with a mistake and France again on the attack. Check out that replay. I think it was Ignatius Parsi. Who came up with the error. We might... Just lost contact with the referee for the time being. So this will be loose head and feed to France, and it'll maybe be the last set of this first half. Wouldn't they love to go in with another try 
in their kit. They come this left-hand side. Out the back, Joffrey. Goes now, throws long. The Yaha's got to get away from the line. He did well. And so too did Kohler in making the tackle. Now back to the centre of the field. Here's another carry coming in from Lacam. Down a short side. Not sure the marker was square there. Ignatius Parsi. This is excellent work again from Palacios. Really put his stamp on this last 15 minutes of this first half. Here he is again at dummy half. It's going to be play on. He's scheming. He's looking for a runner. He stops. He goes back the other way. Might have turned himself in circles on that occasion. Last 30 seconds of this first half. So we go now, France. Oh, strong defence coming in there on Goudemann. And this is last tackle. They go right side. Joffre, a high opportunity. Marcon wants to come through. This time, Tui Peloto comes up with the catch. And it's a nice bit of work. In fact, they're going to say he took it in the in goal area. And now we've got a little bit displeased was our French player. Pretty sure that's Arthur Romano out there in the centres. And without hesitation, referee Mr Griffiths send him to the sin bin. Well, surely that must be a penalty to Tonga if there's a player in the sin bin. <laughs> yeah, you'd think so, mate. But uh, look, it's half time anyway, so I'm sure the, both teams will get instructions from the coach to see how they can improve for the second half. Well, that was a fascinating first 40 minutes coming to you live from Shea Stadium. 16-6 is the scoreline. It's Tonga who jumped out to a 16-0 lead. But last 10 minutes, maybe 12 minutes of that first half, it was a nice bit of fight back, notwithstanding the fact that they'll have the first 10 minutes of the second half minus a player. 16-6 the scoreline. Let's have a look at some of the highlights of this first half. Well, talk us through this, Will. Some excellent work defensively there. And then the opportunity just came for Tonga. Uh, yeah, it was a good outball from Ken Kolomotangi there. He isolated David Fita one-on-one -on -one with the halfback. And, uh, you know, put him one-on-one -on -one with anyone is, is hard to stop. And this is a, one of those opportunities, Amy, we talk about it during the course. It's just a much bigger man, a, a more athletic man on a smaller defender. And it, it's just so difficult to stop. Yeah, and he recognised that. He knew he was going to overpower him. And in, honest, in all honesty, he, he had the desire to get over the line regardless who was in front of him. And, Amy, this was excellent work from Tui Lolohia, who came from behind the ruck and just identified that if he put himself in this play, then France were going to be one short. Yeah, it, it were a great first ball to the winger. And, and he noticed that the the uh, France the French winger was sucked in on the centre, so he, he made it easy and, and he, he relied on his winger to finish that try and he believed he could do that. Third try, and this was a lovely bit of interchange of passing, Will, and... This is an excellent bit of work at the back, but th th that was just an understanding there of what Tonga can do and be very dangerous with their passing between the forwards. Yeah, I think if they do a, a little bit more of that, uh, it'll be hard to they'll be hard to handle. I think um, you know it's hard for for teams to tackle them uh, with three players on them. So if you try and isolate them one on one, bit of push around them, bit of tips makes things a bit easier. So here is that third try. And it's just a nice bit of work from Torquiaho with the pass. But then Fend, Fend, too big, too strong. Second try for David Fafita. It was, mate. It was a great offload from uh, Shua. And again, illustrating the point where a uh, bit early ball, a few more tips at the line. I think teams expect Tonga just to you know, take one out with such big, big strong ball carriers. Offloads and tips like this to, to pull players like Dave, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, out wide, early ball. Uh, will help us a lot. Just looking at that front arm shot, he is just full of power. Now, here was the bright spot, Amy, France, and it was a fantastic run for the Leeds bound, Justin Singardi. Yeah, it was great work there from the, from the nine, noticing and recognising that and what a strong lead line that was and with the desire that he had there and he's shown it, you know, reaching over and keeping keeping the power in his legs to push even though the Tongan lads were on him so he deserved that try you, you can't knock him for that so that is the half time here at Shea Stadium International Rugby League coming to you via Novo Sports across the uh, recast platform 16-6 the scoreline three tries to one David Fafita with two Christian Tuipalutu 
scored the other for Tonga. Justin Sengerde scored the try for France. Ata Moog is one from one. And Siasiwa Tokiaho has kicked two from three. I'm going to put you in the shoes of Laurent Frassinor. Amy, what's he going to be saying to his squad at halftime? For me, I think he's going to be saying, look after the ball. You know, no, no silly passing out there. Get to a get to a point and then and play on it because they have had numbers on an edge at, at certain times of the game and if they keep to the structure of what what he wants that they'll get the joy because they've already shown that they've you know they've already got over the line so I think it will be staying composed working to a place on the field and then working on on one of them edges. Has he seen enough to give him further confidence going into this rugby league World Cup? They're good. Their best is very good. It's occasionally they let themselves down a little with their handling. Yeah, I personally think it's that the core skill they need to, you know, maybe we're working on a little bit, getting used to the different positions. But, you know, they've still got a little bit of time there. It's great to see them all come together. You know, they haven't played for a, a while now and there's still a few players in there that aren't in Catalan. So it's all about gelling and getting them working together. First game against Greece at Doncaster in nine days' time. Then they fight, uh, face the might of England at Bolton. That's just five days later and then... Another big game against Samoa at Warrington on Sunday, October 30. What about Will Christian Wolf? What do you think is going to be his message to the team at halftime? Uh, definitely discipline. Uh, and I think a few things fall under the umbrella of discipline. Uh, one of them being holding the ball. Uh, it's a coach killer when you, you come up with an error and the next set you come up with an error. And I think Tonga done that uh, a few times in that half. And... And then discipline in terms of um, being clean, not giving away penalties. Uh, I think the only time France got down there was off the back of our errors and our penalties. So if we can clean that up, then uh, we'll give ourselves a much better chance. How challenging is it finding the balance between, yes, the pass is there to be thrown and we can create some great play. We saw that a couple of times in that first half against that discipline that you just spoke of. Yeah, obviously you've got to get the balance right. I think... Um, it's, it's not a high-risk play when you're tipping early. Uh, I think, you know, when you're passing into the line uh, or, or running a certain play, I think coaches can cop that. It's the ones where it's just a lack of uh, concentration, dropping it in the play of the ball or dropping it one off the ruck where, uh, they're, you know, probably unacceptable for, for our standards. Group D is where Mate Ma'atonga will be playing in this year's World Cup. Let's go through the opponents. I'm sure you've had a discussion about them already, Will. Papua New Guinea will not be straightforward. You play them at St. Helens in 10 days' time. Yeah, they'll definitely be a big challenge for us. Um, they're, they're a proud rugby league nation. I've been over to Papua New Guinea before, and uh, they, they live and breathe it over there. And so no doubt the players and squad that they've assembled uh, will represent their nation proud. And so um, our focus at the moment is obviously trying to put a good, out hit, good hit out here. And uh, all our attention is, is leading up to, to, to the Papua New Guinea game. And the Kumuls would have been buoyed by their fantastic mid-season result against Fiji. A very strong win for them at Campbelltown. After that, you've got Wales again at St. Helens. So that's a bonus as we spoke of. Uh, just the six-day turnaround for that. What have you spoken about with the Welsh? Uh, well, to be honest, we, we haven't um, underestimated any of our opponents that we're coming up with. We know that we're playing Papua New Guinea, Wales uh, and the Cook Islands. And so... Uh, you know, we're not treating any of them lightly. Uh, but to be honest, our, our focus in camp has just been really trying to be present. This week was all about preparing for France. And after we review this week, all focus will be on uh, Papua New Guinea. And we'll look after things uh, after that when that time comes. What about the downtimes? How do you, what are you doing? In your, you mentioned the ability to switch on and switch off and, and switch on when required. What about... The switch off times. What what have you been finding yourselves doing during the course of camp? Uh, there's a lot of pranks going on uh, within camp. Uh, a lot of cards that are being played. Uh, we're actually based in Leeds at the moment, and so uh, it's been nice to see the city of Leeds. The boys have been getting out, do, doing a bit of shopping and uh, a bit of sightseeing. So that, that that's been great as well. And so uh, been enjoying time in camp. What about you, Amy? Give us an understanding of what's coming up for you with this Rugby League World Cup. I know that for all sorts of reasons that. There hasn't been much international rugby league uh, across the men's and the women's, but how confident is the England squad going into Rugby League World Cup of 2022? 
we're really confident, you know, having having the year postponed, you know, at first it was quite, you know, I, I was a bit gutted, I'm not going to lie, but for me it's probably been the best thing for England. We've had a great season across the Super League. We've had a lot of the, the girls coming through stronger, fitter, faster. It's been unbelievable seeing the change in some of these girls this season. And, and for us, we, you know, we have the desire to win this. We're on home soil. We're used to the weather. We're going to have us, you know, as backing from as fans. It's just going to be phenomenal, and I cannot wait for this. I can only speak from Australian experience, and the rise and rise of women's rugby league it continues unabated. The NRL goes to 10 teams next year, but one of the interesting things is something that you just hit on there, is that, and that is how physically now that, that more and more girls are able to train as professional or near professional athletes, and that's a feature in Australia. Is that the same here in England? We're very different to Australia. I feel like we're a bit slower. Um, the girls in Australia are setting the standard and it's fantastic to see. And I love how the NRL have backed the women and the sponsorships out there are getting behind women's sport and, and what a showcase that they've been putting on because, you know, we have been watching our opposition. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it is a slow burner and we, we, we're improving every year and we're still, we still don't get paid to play. It's, it's our hobby and we enjoy doing it. So, you know, I feel very lucky that I can still be a part of this. But... You know, for my ambition now is to keep growing the game, keep getting the backing, keep getting the publicity, and hopefully one day we'll be able to get some participation for you, even be full-time athletes. All right, so we know Will Hopawada is a star for St Helens, so he's a, uh, in his part-time, he's a prankster. What about you? Where, what do you work as uh, beyond being a rugby league international? So I worked in A&E for four years and then at the beginning of this year I um, got a job with Rugby League Cares which is a, a, a charity that looks after rugby league players and we're also working with Movember creating some mental health workshops for yep. the younger generation and it's been fantastic that I've been able to be a part of this and and you know being being full time but also they're supporting me to have a lot of downtime to be able to train and be in the best shape and physique that I need to be in and be ready for this World Cup. Um, I'll describe you as, uh, well, I'll be kind and say a veteran, maybe that's not so kind, but um, <laughs> do you feel like physically you're, you're at a level now that's better than you've ever been in your career? Honestly, I feel the best that I've ever been. At, you know, 30, 33, I'm 34 in March and I didn't think I'd, I'd still be going like I am and I just can't believe the, the records that I've been making. I'm still the fastest within in the Super League and, you know, I'm one of the strongest. Um, I've been improving my fitness, which is great for me as a player because I'm quite sh explosive. So adding that more to my game, it, it, it's great. And I just, feel, I just feel great. I'm probably in the best shape I've ever been in. I don't want to put any pressure on you, Will Hopawade, but there you are, three years' time. That's the, the challenge that Amy's laid down to you. Can you be in the best ever physical shape that you've been in? Uh, no chance. Amy, <laughs> Amy's probably got me covered now. So, uh, <laughs> look, I, obviously, we, being in St. Helens, we, we support the, the St. Helens uh, Rugby League women's. And so, uh, obviously, she's been a great asset to Rugby League, to St. Helens, and to, to England Rugby League. So, it's been a pleasure to, to watch her play. And um, I think I actually need some, some speed and explosive work from, <laughs> from her. What about your season coming uh, uh, into the Super League, playing with St Helens? Just the 12 games this year, but 12 wins. Quite incredible. So, Mr. 100% for you. Uh, coming back into the grand final too after uh, a bit of a layoff for, for you. How was it physically for you this year in Super League, Will? Uh, yeah, it's been a mixed bag. Obviously, I uh, got to finish on the high, winning the grand final. And, uh, you know, that's something I'll never forget and something I was very grateful to be a part of. And on the flip side, uh, personally, uh, you know, a bit frustrating with with injuries uh yep. unfortunately it's a part of the sport but um yeah had a few injuries this year that um i had to, to manage and, and rehab constantly throughout the year and so thankfully to the club uh, we've got great physios and great staff there and with the help of the boys i was able to, to get on the pitch especially for the grand final tell us about christian wolf and he's had enormous success incredible success over here three straight premierships with st helens now of course he goes back as the understudy the assistant coach to the legendary Wayne Bennett at the Dolphins, the new franchise in the National Rugby League. What makes Christian the successful coach that he is? Uh, well, you're right, mate. He's, uh, it's definitely no fluke what he's done uh, with, with coaching the team to three consecutive uh, premierships. Um, but as a coach, he, um, he knows how to manage the team well. He's uh, First of all, he's a good person uh, and he's very approachable. So as a player, if you're, you're having any issues... Um, 
with the system or even at home, he's, he's always got an open door to for you to go and speak to. Uh, then obviously on top of that, he's got a, a great rugby league mind. And um, being a, a hard man, he's real defensive focused. And yes. I think he would have seen that with the St Helens teams that he's, he's co coached, including this year, that um, you know we won games off the back of our defence. And he really took control, really took uh, the reins of uh, wanting us to be a, a strong defensive team. And I think we showed that this season. Tell us what it's like as a, he's a Tongan head coach, and of course not of Tongan ancestry, but certainly seems to immerse himself in the cultural aspect, which is always such an important part of coming together as a rugby league team. He seems to do that. He, he seems to encourage his assistant coaches to also do that. I'm sure that that is, as a Tongan player and a proud Tongan man, that's something that you appreciate. Absolutely, and I, I speak on behalf of the boys where uh, we really appreciate his acceptance of us as Tongan players and uh, no doubt he's he's brought into the Tongan culture uh, the people like when we go to Tonga the last World Cup we went back to Tonga and um, you know paraded there with our people and uh, he's you know in and amongst it he fully immerses himself in the culture and the, tries to speak it whenever he can and shows the utmost respect for our families our people in the country of Tonga so the boys really appreciate that and I think that's another reason why we we enjoy playing under him Great insight there from Will Hoppawati and Amy Hardcastle leading up to a really important World Cups. Delayed a year, we all know why, much to the disappointment of many, but there is genuine excitement in the north of England and beyond for what promises to be the most enthralling World Cup. Can you talk about that, Will? Because, you know, we look at this, this current World Cup and, and you could probably say, yes, Australia are our favourites, but beyond that, there are another four sides that could potentially be lifting up that World Cup come the end of the tournament. Yeah, it'll probably be the most you know competitive World Cup that we've seen, uh, Jimmy. We've seen the the, the players that have um, chosen to play for Samoa, uh, State of Origin players, Kangaroo players, NRL players that are playing for them, and obviously New Zealand's a great team. They always will be. England, Australia, and uh, you know. We're not underestimating those in our own pool. Uh, Papua New Guinea, yes, a strong, strong nation. We look at the Cook Island team; they got a number of NRL and Super League players in there, and that comes with a lot of experience. And so, uh, I think it'll be great for rugby league in general and great for the crowd. All right, players, back out onto the Shea Stadium. There's Sengade, the try scorer for France in that first half. Powerful man, and as you mentioned, uh, heading to Leeds Rhinos for the next Super League season. In the meantime, he's got. Three very important games and maybe more to play for France in the Rugby League World Cup of 2022. 16-6, the scoreline. Three tries to Tonga, two to David for feet at one to Christian Tuapeloto. And we are underway second half. A number of players in front of the kicker there. There it is. Play on. And Tonga, first use of the footy in this second half. We're in and out of the sunshine here at Halifax, but generally speaking, Amy... Given you're the local, it's just been spectacular weather. Go back and play the ball. Yeah, it's great. Right. Normally rains in Halifax, so we're having a pretty good day here. <laughs> I've been here four days and it's rained the other three. <laughs> Move, Mikael! So we've got oh, replacement player, looks like Moiaki Fotoaku, who's out there on the field as Murdoch Masilla takes Move it forward. Now. now they go right hand side. There's Conrad Hurrell with some. Nice hands to the man standing outside of him, which was interesting. That was for Fida. Here we go. This is uh, Tessie New playing out there on that right wing. Nearly went through. Lola here was there in support. Here's Hurrell. Hands on the footy a couple of times early in this second half. Always a handful. Four defenders there for France. Bring him to ground, including Sangade. Now, down this short side, Lola here will be the kick option there. Oh, into the corner Surrender. and taken by France. So they defused that, but that was a nice bit of work there, Will. They've rolled down the field very nicely there to start this second half. Yeah, good set to start the game with. Uh, I think you've seen the, the plan of attack coming out of yardage was uh, power and go forward. And if we can push more around the boys, then you know, that'll obviously help create uh, some one-on-ones, or even two-on-ones, which will be handy. Isaiah Katoa has come onto the field in jersey number 24. As we see, Mark on. Just starting to make some yards through the middle there. Suli coming up with a tackle. Down a short side again. It's been a feature of the play of France today. 
That is last tackle. So that was a good defensive set. Here they go down that short side again. Got to keep it in the field of play. They cannot do that. Hand goes up from Pelessier. Sorry, fellas. My mistake. But this will be a handover for Tonga in a very strong attacking position. Tell us more about Isaiah Katoa. Hasn't played a National Rugby League game signed with the Dolphins. And he's going to be a player to watch during the course of this tournament. Absolutely. He's got a bright future, Isaiah. He's... Um he played well this year for in the New South Wales Cup for Penrith. Um, earned a, a top 30 contract over with the Redcliffe Dolphins. And, you know, being under Wayne and Christian, I'm, that only help his, his uh, career blossom even further. And so uh, definitely a player to watch in the future. Lola here under a little bit of pressure. Nice French defence. And referee Griffiths is suggesting they might have got in front of him. Left a little early. So this will be tap and go, you would think, for Tonga. Dave Fafuda says, yeah, absolutely. Stop. No, away we go. And picks out a defender, went straight at him. Segato there to lend a hand. So remembering they're one short. I'll get the six again too. Referee Griffiths is signalling. Now they come left-hand side. Amon finds the runner. That was taken a little high there. Play on is the call. Move now. Looks like it's Tolotau Kola who's gone to that fullback position. Here's Olakawatu who's... Got four defenders there to try to hold him up. They look like they might have had the extra number. He couldn't release to Moses Suley. Oh, and, and oh dear. Now we've got a second player in the sin bin. So, Griffiths, referee Griffiths is sent now to the sin bin. The replacement player, Gudeman. So, Mikhail is gone. And now we've got a France side that are down to 11 players. Tap and go Tonga. Lolo here. Parsi dummied and straight. So scramble everywhere here for France. Katoa is out the back. Here's a carry from Fotowaika. And he's going to be stopped again. Four defenders there to hold him up. This is surely draining energy-wise for France. Now another penalty. So the 11-man France team is completely under siege. Dave Fafita want to try number three. Katoa says, no, nah, give it to me. And Murdoch Masilla it is that's charging forward. So just a metre short of the line. They lined up left and right. Olakawatu out on this left-hand side. They go right side. Lola here, extra man. Conrad Harrell, impossible to stop. Backed his way over the try line and got down to what was almost an inevitable try, Will, given... It was 13 against 11. Yeah, uh, you're right, mate. It was, it was bound to happen. I think if France was able to hold them out, it would have been a, a miracle. But um, luckily enough, Tonga scored a try with uh, great lead-up work from Isaiah from dummy half, Tui over to, to Goni, who scored. And just having a look at the replay here, they had threats either side. But it was also Lola here recognising the opportunity that was outside of him, didn't overplay his hand. Another try assist for Tui, which is something you want from your creative players going into a big tournament. Absolutely. Uh, and I think it started from, you know, dummy half actually with uh, Katoa. Uh, if that pass is a little bit off the mark, then, you know, that throws the play uh, out the window. A great lead from Dave Pifita. He's always going to, you know, attract the interest of defenders. Uh, and that created uh, holes and space for... For Goni and Tui to put him through. So who's our goal kicker now in the absence of Sia Siwa? It's Isaiah. It's Isaiah, Isaiah is it? Okay. It'd be interesting. I think that's one of the really interesting spots for Christian Wolf going into this World Cup. He's he's nine and he's or he's hooker and he's option off the bench. What's what's the thinking around that? I know we had Otacolo, Daniela for this game. I know that Saliba Havili is confident of being back for that first game as well. Uh, yeah, well, speaking from experience, I obviously don't know exactly what Wolfie's going to do heading into the World Cup, but uh, history shows that he's usually carried a, a hooker on the bench. Um, it's been, you know, Saliba and Isaiah's brother, Sionik uh that have been our hookers, but uh, looks like Isaiah stepped up to the plate and he might be, be the hooker there as well. So I guess we'll see what happens. So here is the replay. Successful conversion attempt, too, by the way, from Isaiah Katoa. So the scoreline now 22 points to six. Yeah. 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 
making it very tough for the French. Just wondering. Yeah. We're still a couple of minutes away from them getting their extra player. What move? In fact, oh, they might be back, back to 12. Back, back, so, no. I'll have to keep an eye on that. Can you do a head count for me, Amy, on this French side, please? So that two, we know move exactly our how line. many are out there. Back with me. Wait. Go, two. So here's Tonga. Three. Move. What do we got, Amy? You got an update for us? Go, I think it's 12. They're back to 13. Well, I, I think it's gone back to a 14 just because it's the trial. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. They've just let them you know, stay out there with 13. Well, that probably should be the way. Remember, we're playing international rules. Not a full Backwards. senior international match. So there was ball at the back. Whoa. So that's Move, a nice set there back. from Tonga coming up Go, after points two, Will. It is, mate. Uh, you know, I think every rugby league team and coach will, will be the same uh, with the general rule that, you know, you score points, the next set you want to complete and get to your kick, and uh, they've done that one-on-one -on -one strip there. So here is the one-on-one -on -one strip, and there was a lovely little offload there. Came to Tua Peloto. We thought he was going to get across for try number two. So Tonga go on the attack again. Oh, dear. Junior Amon had it passed before he had it caught. And unfortunately, he's come up with the Middle. error. Middle. So for those people who may not be aware, Talatau Amone, the Dragons yeah, player, yeah. has had one test I'll match, the mid-season test I'll match I'll for Tonga. Would have been a steep learning curve for him against New Zealand, who put on a very good display. But he's clearly, Will, one of those players of the future for Tonga, player of the future for the Dragons. Absolutely. He's, uh, he's put in some strong performances for the Dragons this season in the NRL. And, uh, coming in World Cup will only be good for his progress and uh, his career, and so it'll be good to see him play. So here's France. Four. Move now. Four. Four. Work to do. Three defenders there. And down a short side. Little tip Five. on, and there's Move to it. more Go strong on. defense. Five. Conrad Harrell getting involved. Tui Lola here as well. Joffrey. This is a high one, and this is going to be a challenge now for Cola, who comes up with an excellent catch at the back and shows his versatility. Move First back. half on the wing, Hold. and now Hold. Go on. playing at that fullback position. So here's Tonga now with their footy, their chance to bring it out Move. of their own end. Move, Mikhail. Hold. Go to. Three. Move together. All the way. So Kalal Matangi gets the dummy half. Carry from Suli. And now it's Tui Peloto. There's another strong carry. That's that yards coming out of their end. And it actually makes him on the attack. That was a 15 metre run. Last tackle comes now to Lola here. He's going to put it high. This is going to be a test. Uh, bounces out in. On the fall, this will be a handover for France back from where it was kicked. Yeah, I think those little discipline things will be something that uh, we'll be addressed at halftime. We've come up with a knock-on early, uh, earlier in the game, and uh, now here with the kick-out on the fall, these are the discipline things that we need to tidy up. So still 30 minutes remaining in this match. Still an opportunity for both coaches to run out players in combinations that... They might have been experimenting with it, training, and get an opportunity to get it in match conditions. France right down a short now. side again. It's been a feature, held Stop. up in the play, and that's Take Julian, play. who's back onto the field. Harold defensively been good. Tessie knew there to lend a hand Move as well. Back Here they are, one. back through the middle now, France, and that's Seguet. He's come back onto the field. Four. Here's Move the ever-impressive Pelissier. Oh. Of course, problems. 
for Tonga in that first half. Five, move like it. So dummy and go. Oh, had a man on the inside. We thought that was Morg. That'll be a penalty. No, referee Griffiths says incorrect play the ball. So this will be Tonga's footy. Yeah, great bit of play there from the French. Show and go, slicing through. Player on the inside. Potentially could have got to him, but uh, wasn't to be. Arte Morg, it was, who what? looked Move outside back, and back, back on the inside. It was go a chance on. for the relief. Six again, no squirt. What? 11 tries in Move. his 47 Super League go games on. for Artur. Catalan start. So here's Tonga, a little interchange of passing. They might look for another. They don't get it. In fact, they've come up with the error. So this will be play on now. France with an opportunity. Oh, that was strong defence. I think it was Suli that came over the top. Here out of dummy half is Yaha. And that was strong contact there from Kalal Matangi as well. Now they go left-hand side. France. Going to go on the attack again. Morg goes out the back. Oh, bounces to no one. Marcon has to go back and pick up, and now he goes back to the centre of the field. Oh, that's a pass that's gone to no one in particular other than space. And so they don't quite get it right there, France, Amy, and that was a great opportunity for them, but this will now be more Tong on footy. Yeah, it's about looking after that ball, and and if you're not, if you're not sure about the pass, just keep hold of it, just take the tackle and... I'm sure you can get some at set each side, but a bit sloppy there from France. Oh my God. Let's get in then. Let's go. So, we are back to 13 on 13. I have had that conf well done on your maths there, Amy. <laughs> Sorry, I did have to count about five times. <laughs> well, it had, had us a little confused here as well, but uh, as you and Will have pointed out, given the fact oh, that it is a warm-up game for the Rugby League World Cup. Makes sense to keep it 13 on 13. His passy under pressure. It's amazing the leadership role that he had to take in the absence of Alex Wormsley, the back end of the St. Helens season. He did, mate. done such a great job uh, for us. You know, that was such a big loss, but uh, he stepped up to the plate. With his carries and his defence. Oh, that was Katoa with a no-look pass. That was Kola with a round-the-corner special. There is another one from Katoa. Here's Olakawatu around the back intercept. Well, that was going to be the oh, most spectacular try of the day. Some brilliant lead-up work came in the form of Isaiah Katoa and Talata Kola. And in the end, it was good work from France to negate it. Spectacular play, Two. Will. It was, man. It was uh, the the young men for the Tongans, Tolutau and Isaiah Katoa going through the middle there. Uh, it was good to see their their youth experience come through and almost come over with four points. Penalty now. So Rouge says, let's get started straight away. Wait, wait, wait. 22 points to six. Conrad Hurrell coming up with the only try in the second half, and that is when France were down to 11 men. So they took their advantage while they had it. Now France, tap and go. What can they provide here? Another opportunity for Laurent Frassino's men to get some combinations going in the lead-up to this Rugby League World Cup. Now another carry. This is push. Plenty of energy when he carries the footy. De Costa is back onto the field, and there's a step. And Gordeman, who earlier went to the sin bin, is back onto the field. De Costa comes out. More ball on the inside, and that's defensive work coming in from Parsi. Only a couple of metres out now. France, long ball. So they're stretching the defence, and that was a dummy and go, and Rouge it was that... Tried to get through. Oh, dear. I think he's got himself an injury. Mate, take your time. Players stopped effective it. immediately, Amy. And this is worst nightmare for all concerned, but especially for player Rouge. It is. You know, it's a warm-up game. It's not It's not started yet. So let's hope it's just a little 
a little knock and, and nothing too serious. It, it's also good to see Garcia back on the field as well and seeing how, how he controls this part of the Play game. The and there's some good shape now coming out. So that is good news. Rouge back onto his feet. There's a little kick. Came off the referee. So I'm going to go back to where the ball was played. I think referee Griffiths has said, well, why don't we try that one again? So let's see. Let's see if we can come up with a different. I don't think I've ever seen that before on a rugby league field. Have a replay. This time they do something different. Down a short side. And this is... Pusch, who's going to be held up last tackle and that will be a handover one of the stranger things i've seen on a rugby league field there will you make sense of that one yeah well there's the first for everything mate and uh <laughs> that's the first time i've seen that i don't know if that's part of the international rules or his own rules but um it was quite funny to see actually might be rules for a halifax on a saturday sunny saturday afternoon Is in right? october Is that a halifax rule amy move back with me hold So here's some good defence coming in from France. Slowing the play of the ball. Tonga. Stepping hard. Oh, ball came loose. There were three in the tackle, but it's going to be play on. Stefani it is that takes the ball into contact, and it was strong contact too. Moses Suli over the top. So back to the middle of the field. Here's another carry. This is Lacam. Now De Costa Short, comes two, to Joffre, three, lovely long five. ball. Oh. Nice defensive work there from Tui Peloto. It's Marcon who Short, threatened the three. line. Move now! So here's France putting pressure on this Tonga defence. That was Desiree. Now the kick coming in, and it will be dived on. France have scored. The kick coming in from Morg. Just trying to pick up who the try scorer was. It was sustained pressure coming in from France time and time again. And then they came up with the four pointer. Highly impressive, Amy. And even though they've had some difficulties against the much bigger opposition, they're certainly trying until the end. Yeah, and like we spoke at half time, you know what, what the coach will have said in the changing rooms, and you can see they've come out a different team. It's really interesting to see that they're, they're looking after the ball a lot more and they're getting to a platform and then they're, they're shifting it and they're getting some joy in it. In, in all honesty, it's great to see them get over there. You know, it's just keeping the game interesting. Cesar Rouge, it was that earlier had the injury and we were immediately you think, oh no, World Cup in danger. No danger whatsoever, got across for the try. Nice chase on a kick from Atamug. And here he is, the French number six. Can you add the extras as well? I think this is going to give the the French team a lot of confidence now, and maybe uplift and knowing that they can actually play with some good rugby league. Here he is, swings through, and that is no problem. So now we've got a little bit of an unexpected scoreline. I think the vast majority of people would have expected a very strong tong and victory. Here's the replay again. Nice work, maybe a little push in the back there for Tui Lola here, but. That's a good try under any circumstances. Yeah, T Tonga won't be happy with that try, and they'll, they're going to they're going to go and um, come guns blazing now. And y you can see that you know they don't want France to get in front. Three quarters of the way through this game, it is international rugby league coming to you on the Novo Sports Recast Channel, live from Halifax in the north of England. A real buzz around the community. Not just for this game, but the Rugby League World Cup. No game here. This Rugby League World Cup, there was eight years ago, or nine years ago now. Move together! Wait, back in wait. 2013, and indeed it featured Tonga. Four players from this Tongan side, or squad, were in action that night. Daniel Tupo, Samasoni Lange, who's playing today, Mahe Fanua and Conrad Hurrell. Four, so he's France, two, two, a bit of second phase play. Go, the Spun Albert, around in the tackle there was Segue. Now out of dummy half and causing problems. Five, here's a step. Move. This is Desiree. Okay, well, and France muscle their way over the halfway line. De Costa goes down a short up. side again. And here's a kick into the shadows and taken there nicely. One, and Kohler it is that are all oh. desperate to see in open space. 
That's good defensive work there from France. And they shut him down. Two, move, pole. Pole. A little bit of a spread of the footy. And here's an opportunity Three. for some replacement Two. players. That's Mahe for North, who we were just referring to. Coming back onto the field. Famously scored as they get themselves a penalty here, Tonga. Famously scored a couple of tries in a Challenge Cup final. Mahe for Hull FC. No doubt he tells you about that through the course of the, the camps, Will. <laughs> yeah, he's probably uh, another class clown, Mahe. Uh, he's coming to the camp a bit later in the week um, to play with, uh, with the boys with a few of the injuries. And so uh, it's good to see him out there again. Here he goes for he wants to tap and go. He wants to show Christian Wolfe that he is ready for this. And now we get the laid off load. And here's Olakawatu with that familiar approach to the defensive line. Slowish in the tackle. Still not happy with that. Hamole. Now there's a spin and turn. And this is Albert Vette who's on the field now. Another one of these late inclusions in the squad. They go right side again. The dummy and go and. He's going to be just short of the line. That was for Fida. Now the charge comes from Vete. Defenders there to hold him up. There's four Frenchmen. And now he's reaching out. The pads are just hanging in there on the goalpost. Now they go right-hand side. And they get across and score. They went to that man again. David Fafida gets try number three this afternoon at the Shea. And Tonga extend their lead, 26-12. And that was just a, a weight of pressure there, Will. Tackle after tackle after tackle. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the more we can hold on the ball, the, the better we'll be. And, uh, again, early ball, one-on-one -on -one with uh, Dave Fifita. He's able to score a hat-trick. You don't see many score, back rowers scoring hat-tricks, but, um, again, he does stuff that not many other players can do. And a great pass by uh, Kian Kolomatangi, by the way, from dummy half. That might have been his second try assist today for Fida this afternoon. You're right, actually, yeah. So Dave Fafida, just 22 years of age, he's already played 84 NRL games. He scored 37 tries, incredible strike rate for a back rower. And of course has represented Queensland on five occasions. So here's Isaiah Katoa, Parker College. That's where he went to school. Proud rugby school. But as Will has mentioned, he's a top 30 player for the incoming Dolphins in the National Rugby League. Their assistant coach will be Christian Wolf. So great time to spend with his coach directly in front. Should be no problem. Pilots it over. And the scoreline is extended. Isaiah Katoa has been perfect this afternoon with the boot. And the scoreline now, Amy, is 28 points to 12. What's the danger here for France, Amy? It's, uh, they've been highly competitive against a very physical side this afternoon, and I think Coach Frassinor will be looking for a continuation of that. Yeah, they, they catch it off, France. It's important that they, they keep switched on in the game. That, you know, they've come out second half and they've been impressive. But for me, I think Tonga are, are going to get a bit of rolling now with the ball, and I think France just need to stick in there what? and just keep back, keep doing back, what they are. Back, well, they're back. getting people in front. Go! What? Strong charge. That was Albert Vete. Albert, Still going. familiar Still going. name for those oh, in Australia. Now playing with Castleford. Two. It will be in. next season. Hold. So, Kalon Matangi gets the dummy half again, and again he's serving it up nicely for his teammate. And they will get themselves a penalty. There was the appeal, and now a bit of a chat. Fodawaka says, yeah, it was high, sir. Yeah, they, they just need they need to keep doing what they're doing and just get stuck in defence, but just watching them high tackles. You know, they're doing really well, France. You can't take anything away from them. You know, they're a big set of lads, Tonga, and, you know, there's, there's still a lot of time in this game. I think what it does, Amy, too, it highlights for, for France. You know, this is the type of thing they're going to experience. Their pool A, Greece, and then we mentioned England, of course, the home side. Big win for them last night, 50 nil. 
against BG and then Samoa. Here's Tonga on the attack. And this is Vette and he's going to be stopped. He's only five metres out. Kaloma Tungi again to dummy half. And then he goes out the back. And here's a charge. It's not Dave Fafita for number four. Held up. On the ten. In fact, it's, I don't think it is Dave Fafita. Is that Tavita Totola that's come on? Play it. Go three. Yeah, it is. South Sydney Rabbitohs front row. What an impressive season he had this year. Here they go. Now, Fodawaka stepped off the oh. left. And Standing in the tackle. Already had some second phase from him this afternoon. Kalau Matangi goes left hand side. Katoa stops. Comes off the French hand. I think that'll be called knock on. It was. But it just showed Will there the way that Isaiah Katoa can play at a couple of different speeds when he's approaching the defensive line. Yeah, I've been really impressed with uh, how he's trained um, since coming into camp. He's his tempo and uh, the way that he plays uh, can really throw a defensive team off um, off their mindset. I think he goes into the line fast and he slows it up. He holds the ball up. And so the more time you give him, obviously, the harder he'll be to handle. So I think for France, it's just about cutting off that time. Great way to describe it too. Tempo, isn't it? Which is you see Nathan Cleary do it where he just engages the line at different speeds. Here they go. Right hand side out the back. And this is Cola. Gets across for the try, strides over, almost untouched. It's what we wanted to see. Maybe a few extra metres in that one, but when you got the speed of Tolatau Kola, he gets across very comfortably. So just starting to get away a little bit for France in the final minutes here, Will. Yeah, they made the most of that. Uh, I think Tui went well into the line. They played the four and three. Uh, Kola at the back, I think. Anytime you, you have a big body like Connie running the lead line into... A defensive line that he attracts interest and it holds players up which you know opens up some space for the player at the back and in that case it was Gola. Another try assist for Tui Lolo here so this is excellent work you made a, a really good point there we we're talking about just how deep he goes into the line. Yeah and I think the more he can do that for us the, the better we'll be especially with the, the strike that we have out wide um, you know back rowers like Dave Fifita and Olokoatu, I think um, the more they're, they're running those leads uh, genuinely, the more interest they'll attract from the defence. And so that opened up space for a back shot wide, and Donald Dow actually done a great job as well to hold on to that ball and um, score the try. Tui Lolo here and Dave Fafita have left the field. So that would, you would think, the end of their afternoon of footy. Two very important players for this upcoming. Rugby League World Cup. A great performance by both those players today. Here's Isaiah Katoa. Young man with the Rugby League world at his feet. He's been perfect this afternoon. That continues. And Tonga, 34. Lead France, 12. I think the sun's gone, Amy. The local, you can let us know. Do we see a re-emergence at any stage this afternoon? I think that's uh, all you're getting today, I'm afraid. Outside! <laughs> Does it allow you, Will, to play a little differently when you have uh, Toletau Kola at the back compared to a, a Tessie New just because of that blistering speed that he has? Uh, well, it's, it's definitely an asset that he has, doesn't he? Uh, you can't really, you know... Coach speed to a certain extent, and he's got that naturally. Uh, at the same time, however, I know Desi is very quick uh, as well, and so um, obviously thought that would be the quickest in the team, but I, I wouldn't, um, you know, shy away from the fact that Desi's got a lot of speed behind him as well. If you are watching and you, there's a new names for you. You want to learn a little bit about Philippe Uh Amazing athlete, exciting Seagulls youngster. He's had one test already in his career, just the 20 NRL games for those Seagulls. Made his debut this year. His mother was an hurd Olympic really? hurdler. His father was an Olympic sprinter. And his fastest time Five for the 100 me. is 10.58. So yeah, that's for the rubbish, 20 year old. <laughs> Here's a kick from Amon. It's a good one. It's going to be a scramble now. Getting back there. Nice bit of work. And he needed to. He's been quite impressive, Morgan Escarde. And he saves the day for France. 
if you're looking for some positives to take out of this, Amy, for the French team, then I would suggest that the form of Morgan Escada at the back is certainly one of them. Yeah, he's been a huge asset to the team. You know, it, it, it came away from fullback for a little bit. He went on the bench and, and Louis came on for him. But you can see the change as he's come back on, just the structure. And he, he just knows that position really well. And, and you can see the, the team respond really well to him. Oh, I tell you what, it's, that's his second either kickoff or dropout that he's taken. Amali Olakawatu, he just showed that footwork that Will Hopawati was talking about earlier. Going straight past French defenders. So here they go on the attack again. They're looking for 40. Totola. He's brought down. Five metres out. They go right side. Ball on the inside. That's a lovely tackle to Costa. It was on Kian Kalal Matangi. A charging Kian Kalal Matangi. And he's come up with a great tackle. That's the type of thing, Will, that can, can lift the team. It is. Uh, you know, defensive displays, just like we've seen the, the French team do then. Uh, really uplifts and inspires your teammates and so the more they can do that obviously the better they'll be for them in the World Cup uh, hey, great shot of desperation there so here goes France another opportunity and hey, this is good interchange of passing and Lacan it is that takes another carry oh, that was to Toller I think you know it was Got away, getting out of the line. Now Escardi. Ball goes right over the top. Yaha comes back on the inside. Here's France showing a little bit of enterprise in attack. And in the end, it's up to the defensive work. Coming in there from the Tongan side as the ball goes high. And again, it's a difficult one to take. And again, Tolatakola. Shows that fullback Wait. is not foreign Go. for him. Quicker. And he takes it beautifully. Four. Two. Move. Hold. Go. Two. So I guess now, Will, it's a case of everyone staying healthy, right? Eight. As we, we have a, your first game in the Rugby League World Cup just nine days away. It is, mate. I think, uh, you know, a big part of this, this game was you know, one to build combinations to get some Four. match fitness, especially Move. for Play the players that haven't played in a few weeks. Uh, then obviously, yeah. Staying injury free is a, a big one as well. It's a long ball now to Kaloa Matangi, and then this is a moan. Ball out in front, nice work. Here's Conrad Hurrell charging down the sideline. Ball on the inside. Taltao pushed away from one and got across for the try. It's usually the dazzling feet of Junior Amon that thrills us. This time it was speed and strength, and he gets across for the try. The try assist coming in from. Conrad Harrell, and that's a very strong charge and a, an understanding and an example right there, Will, of exactly what this Tongan side can do. Yeah, it's good to, to see the ball sing a little bit. Uh, we see Moses Tully there with great skill putting on to, to Conrad Harrell, who's um, on the wing there for a little bit. I'm not too sure if he's playing wing for the remainder six or so minutes. Uh, and a great finish by uh, Daladawa Mune. He still had a bit of work to do. There was two defenders there he had to beat, and uh, I was lucky enough to beat them and score a try. So here's Isaiah Katoa. He's taken this ball back a long way. I reckon you're looking at a kick of about, well, 25 metres back. It's just another string to the bow, isn't it, for Isaiah, given the fact that so you see is probably not going to be on the field the entire 80 minutes and you just never know when your tries are coming, Will. You're right, mate. And, uh, you know, goal kicks are so important these days. You know, you can score the same amount of tries and the goal the goal kicking can be the difference in a game. And so if we can, you know, put our best goal kickers out on the field, the better it be for us. Uh, and, you know, he's kicked them well today. Hopefully this one goes over too. All right. In a beautiful background, it looks like the curator's shed there at Shea Stadium. Here is the kick from Isaiah Katoa, and he has proven to be a marvel this afternoon. Maintains his perfect record. So they get their 40 tonga, and you just get the sense now with four minutes to play, Amy, that if referee Griffiths packed it all up and said, right, oh, that's enough, gents, then there'd be a lot of people be happy with that. 
No, no, no. It's a great. Do you know what? Regardless of what the score is, it's been a great game, and and France haven't gone away, and they've they've dug deep, dug dug deep, should I say? But you know, Tonga's just got some class in, in their team, and, and you can see that shining through. And I think that you know both teams have got out of this match what they were looking for: what? a hit out, a, a development of combinations, an understanding of where they are as a team, and. Now they get seven, eight, nine days to, to get it right for game one. Yeah, and, and that's why we, you know, they need these matches is to see them combinations, but also, you know, they've they've travelled and they haven't played for a while, so it's kind of just just in them cobwebs off, and and it's great regardless what the score is. It's not about that today. It's just about performance and, and what combinations work. Tonga with the footy, three minutes remaining in this international match, coming to you live via the Novo Sports Recast Channel. What? International Rugby League comes to the Shea again. Daniela Otokolo is back onto the field. His passy, the strong carry. Maybe they'll look for some second phase. He had the option there. He's still got the option there. Chooses against it. So they go down a short side. Here's that footwork of Amone. Can't get away. Nice defensive work. France, as Amy has suggested, Evidence to the end that they are Move now. working as a unit defensively. There was Otokolo with a nice carry. Had a dummy half. So this will be Amon who gets opportunity shut down and he shapes back the other way. And this will now be last tackle here for Tonga as they're peppering the French line. Otokolo come open side. They come out now. Kick! Olakawatu! He's threatened all day on that left-hand side. His footwork has been a feature. And now he gets across and, and scores another try for Tonga. And that might just be cherry on top for coach Christian Wolf and his squad. Will? Yeah, the second half towards the back end especially has been a good performance from the boys. I think there we just see the skill uh, and the maturity of a young player in Isaiah Gatoa to catch and put it on the toe like that. Uh, and then, you know, some skill there for... Olokwata to catch the ball and put it down. Uh, great bit of skill from young Isaiah. Congratulations, Will. You're now a selector for the Tongan side for that first game going up against Papua New Guinea at St. Helens. That's Tuesday, October 18. Who's in the halfback position based on what we've seen out of both Tui Lolo here and Isaiah Katoa? Uh, look, I think both, they've both uh, played a great game. So I think Tui's really you know, controlled the game uh, when he's been on and Young Isaiah has come off the bench, he's you know, kicked the house down, goal kicking, and yeah. he's shown his bit of skill and he's not, not afraid to control the boys around the paddock. You know, despite being a young lad, I know that can be a, a bit of a, a bit daunting to, you know, to tell older players, you know, yeah. to tell them what to do, uh, especially ones that you know, are more experienced uh, than yourselves, but he hasn't shied away from that. And uh, again, he showed a great piece of skill here to, to catch the ball and put on the toe for Morley to score that try. You okay with... Isaiah Katoa telling you what to do, Will. You <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> mate. If it benefits the team, then uh, for sure. Congratulations, Amy. You've been added to the same selection panel. I'm going to ask you the same question as we see Isaiah Katoa. Oh, just as we were talking about how well he's been kicking, he's has one waved away, but it's, it's a good problem to have for Coach Christian Wolf. Yeah, of course, and you know, for, for me, they've been they've both been outstanding, and, and they show real class. And Christian's a clever bloke, and, and he knows what he's doing. And and we'll definitely see in that that test match that comes up um, why he's probably chosen who he has. So, clock saying we're just about done. Maybe a little bit of injury time here. Something that we're not quite used to in the National Rugby League. What? So the Taz Batiri Trophy will go to Tonga, the inaugural running of the event. As we see a strong carry was Albert Vette. As the ball now is put in the hands of Amon, and Amon gets to the fullback, and now Kola is held but is able to offload. Otokolo gets across, and that is a little bit of the razzle-dazzle, the second phase play, the highly entertaining rugby league that Tonga are capable of. Great bit of skill there from uh, from the Tonga team there. I think a number of offloads, 
number of passes that uh, you know hit the spot, and so any of those passes go a bit behind or a bit in front, a bit below, that can really put off a try. But um, you know, every one of those were able to hit the mark and come away with the try. Great support play there from young Hooker Nella to score the try on, on full time. Another one of these young players in the squad you made mention. There is a Warriors player, just only 20 years of age, only the nine National Rugby League games. But he's certainly a player of the future. Is this Albert Vete, third choice goal kicker? <laughs> Will? If he misses this, he's going to cop it. <laughs> yeah, he's Conrad. He's ready to play a role here. <laughs> You just get the sense that this might be the first time that Albert's done this in, in a match. But here he goes. He's hit it pretty nicely. Oh, dear. It is waved away. That was for the 52. Not that that is of utmost importance, but well done, Tonga. They've won the first edition of the Taz Batiri Trophy. In the end, the final scoreline just got a little away from France as the players shake hands. Novo Sports recast channel with our very first international, and it is won by Tonga. We'll keep our eye on these players, but let's get a summation from our expert commentators. Will Hopawade, St. Helens star, and of course, in this Tonga World Cup squad, Give yourselves a rating for the game. Your thoughts on it, Will, and give us an insight about how you think Christian Wolf will view this performance. Yeah, I think it was a good hit-out for, for the boys, uh, Jimmy. I think plenty of positives to take out of that. And, uh, you know, a, a positive to take out of that is that we there's still room for improvement, uh, which, you know, we're definitely going to need coming into our pool games, you know, starting with Papua New Guinea. Um, but, look, there was some great individual efforts, some great individual tries, and, some great team tries as well. We've seen at the at the end there uh, a number of players there. We a few things we can can improve on, which is only a, a better thing for us. Just looking, Amy, at these highlights coming out of the second half, and you know, it was closer there for you know, 22 points to 12, and there was France putting some pressure on, and uh, there are just like for Tonga, a few positives that that France can take out of this game as well. Yeah, they won't be disappointed with that, I'm sure. You know, they've got to be pleased with how they've performed and. They've, they've played against some world-class players there and yeah. to be able to defend that is exhausting. So for me, they, they deserve a, a pat on the back and they'll take so many positives away from that and I don't think they'll be disheartened at all. So there is Politao Kola, who's moved the fullback. I think I'm right in saying, did he play the full 80 minutes, Will? I think he played the first first on the wing and then the 40 minutes at fullback. Yeah, I think he might be right, Jimmy. He played, uh, yeah, played on the wing, played at fullback, and uh, each role that he did play, he played it to the best of his ability, and he played great. Uh, I thought he had a good game, young Tolu. That was really classical backing up from Tolatau Amone, wasn't it? It, it, it? it touch of Terry Lamb about it. Conrad Hardell was there, and it was almost like he was in front of him there, Amone. Great sense of anticipation. Absolutely, and he still had a bit to do there. There were still, you know, two defensive uh, players coming across the cover, but... He's able to, to beat them and score the try. And that was the point you made, too, with the, the try to Olakawatu, the, the decision-making and the skill exhibition from Isaiah Katoa to get that ball on the foot almost before he caught it. It does, mate. It, he, uh, he actually made that look pretty easy, but it's, it, that's not that easy, uh, to be honest. And uh, it was a great try and try assist from him. So, Amy... What's next for you? Where do you? When does the squad get together? Where's the, where, where does preparations start for game one of the Rugby League World Cup? So for me, I've got actually my last fitness test tomorrow. Um, early start for me, so I'll be fasting later on tonight. Yeah. Um, and then we, we've got a couple of sessions through each week for the next two weeks, working on a, our fitness, core skill and wrestling. And then next Saturday, we'll be getting all together, probably for his last run out, and then we're going to camp on the 29th. Well, on behalf of everyone at Novo Sports, we wish you all the very best for the upcoming World Cup. Uh, great to have you as part of our commentary team today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Oh, yeah, thank you. I've yeah. really enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, you're an absolute natural. So congratulations with that. As we see the Tongan squad and the French squad just going around and acknowledging the crowd here at the Shea Stadium. Final scoreline.
48 points to 12. Tonga over France. On behalf of everyone at Novo Sports, Will, we wish you all the very best for your upcoming Rugby League World Cup. The second edition for you after such success with this Tongan side in 2017. And great to have you as part of the commentary team today. I know you're a, a little reluctant to do it. How'd you enjoy it? <laughs> I enjoyed it, mate. Yeah, it's been a great experience. Uh, thank you for, for having me on board and uh, grateful to be a part of it. So we might just get our cameras into this southerly corner of Shea Stadium as we see an acknowledgement here the Tongan side. Conrad Hurrell, would you believe, is leading the charge? So they've just... A large number of Tongan fans here in the stadium today. A number of dignitaries. I think I'm right, Will, in saying that is the High Commissioner, the Tongan High Commissioner. Uh, yeah, it is. And so it's great to, to see their support. Uh, and obviously the boys showing their uh, respect and appreciation for, for them and coming to support us today. A number of dignitaries from the proud island nation of Tonga. Their rugby league team has done them well a great deal of pride for this island nation and it's fantastic to see but not a surprise to see them acknowledge the fans that the rugby league lovers here at Halifax that have come out to see some real stars in action David Fafita just underlining too what an incredible force he is going to be during the course of this World Cup he was in the kangaroos train on squad he elected to represent Tonga. Have you had a conversation with him about that, Will, as to get a better understanding as to why? Oh, well, he spoke to the boys uh, earlier this week and just explained that he was grateful for the opportunity to represent his uh, his father's side um, of the family. Uh, and, you know, we obviously it's a big positive and plus for us that he's playing with us. So we will have the presentation of the Taz Batiri Trophy. As we've mentioned, very first edition of it taken out in convincing fashion by Tonga for those people who don't know who Taz was former Panthers former Bulldogs player pioneer of international rugby league a lover of the game and certainly evangelical about the great attributes of the 13 man code so we might head down to the ground our MC to coach Christian Wolf comes from Keith Mason Both squads will come together for the group photo. And that concludes our broadcast here from the Shea Stadium. On behalf 
of Amy Hardcastle on behalf of Will Hopawade. My name's Jimmy Smith. Thank you for joining us today. Enjoy your Rugby League World Cup. And thank you for tuning in.